Good afternoon, everyone. Or actually, good evening. When I say afternoon, it is quarter of nine Eastern time. It is definitely not afternoon. My hat time flies when you trade. Anyways, here's Twitter. I thought I would go over this. This is Melissa with the stock swish.com. Basically, 134. Look at that. Look. That's crazy. Mm. 134 million shares were traded in this today. It's pretty wild, isn't it? And that is wild. Let's look at Twitter. Here's a stock. The IPI opened last year. The exact date of it actually was November 7th. They priced this a lot better than they did Facebook. The stock, stock broke a little teeny weeny bit after the IPO price opened, but lifted itself almost immediately and rallied. And actually, the way this broke was not a bearish gap like Facebook. I don't know if anyone remembers this. I did a video on Facebook a long time ago. This broke the low of the IPO price on the second day, but it actually didn't gap that way. So it held, okay? Held, did a buy set up here, rallied, rallied, and made new highs very quickly. The stock price basically doubled almost from the IPO price. It pretty much did. Now, this was a good place actually to sell out of this here with some profit if you were along the stock. It had a lot of opportunity in here to continue higher. It didn't do it. Here it could have continued higher. It didn't do it. Now remember the market has been coming in somewhat. So the fact this was coming in wasn't like the end of the world. I didn't like this gap here. I think this was the earnings and I just wasn't crazy about it. I didn't even give it a little bit of a thought. I didn't really like it that much. Today, though, when I got up and saw this uh, gap here this morning, I said, oh, this is good. Now, let's go look at this chart. Look at this move today. The dream target on Twitter today was $33. It far exceeded that. It went all the way down to looks like $31.72. It went a dollar thirty more than the dream target. I mean, this is exactly what can happen when these stocks want to roll over. Sometimes it's unbelievable. If you shorted every one minute rally in this today, you probably stayed in this trade until the low. But really, thirty three dollars was enormous from the first move. But it went way past that. That's another reason why sometimes you just, you know, every once in a blue moon. You'll, you'll be in a trade and you let it follow it down and the market did help this today. That's probably why I pushed down more than a dollar. I just, you know, it's really, really one of these things where you have to predict the market movement right to get something late in the afternoon to stay with it if that's what you want to do. Now, I'm going to put something out on this. Here's the trade I called here. It's very reasonable. Entry was 35.61 and again, it went huge from there. It went $4 from this move. But I want to point something out here, which was the open. When I reviewed the Twitter in the morning, it had, I think, 8 million shares pre-market. That's a lot. And I actually thought it should rally first and then set up. And I thought if it set up immediately without rallying, that it wouldn't hold, would possibly get stopped out and then set up again. I knew it would work no matter what. I just didn't know the way it was going to formulate itself here into the open. The fact that this, I want to just, I just want to look at this bar here right now. Just look at this bar. This is the open of the price. It's almost 2 million shares into the open. That is almost unbelievable. It's almost like the best thing I've ever seen. And I'm going to have to put this actually in the gap class because this, this is 60 seconds. 60 seconds, 2 million shares almost came into this stock in 60 seconds and held. This didn't rally. The next bar wiped it out massively, down, threw itself, and crushed it like a sandwich. Now, this happened here. It doesn't matter. This is still an unbelievable short here. And this is, I can't say enough. When I saw this this morning, it was almost like, <gasps> Because I missed really the volume that came in here when I called this. If I had seen this, I would have called it earlier. But actually, this was valid. But this, I mean, this is like, oh. I mean, the stock did this and held. I mean, I can't tell you what that means. To have 60 seconds worth of that volume 
going up, okay, so here's the resistance, to push up and hold itself like this did so quickly, so much volume, that is incredible. I've actually never seen anything like it. I mean, I've seen this set up over and over and over and over and over again, but I, this is the most volume I've ever seen in this type of setup. <laughs> it's, it's almost shocking because, remember, there was 8 million people for the open, pre-market, so 2 million come in here. That's like 25% of the initial people, and that's what I was concerned about. The people would be shorting it, cover into the open, and then it would break. Instead, 25% of the people covered it, 75% didn't, filed it through to the downside, selling, 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 which is what pushed this down here in the first place and made the gap, by the way. More selling came in, and then the shorts came in, and then the stock fell over. And it, it just wasn't even getting any lift here. I mean, it was this couldn't rally to save its life at all in the morning, not at all. I don't even think there's three green bars in a row here. Let's look. Here. The only three green bars in a row, and this is a baby green bar, is after 10 o'clock. The stock didn't have three green bars in a row to rally in the one minute chart until 10 after 10 a.m. That's really something. So just to review, this is a huge sign of weakness. If you don't know what I do, you wouldn't know to see this. And at the time I saw it, called the trade, but it could have been called even more aggressively. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the volume here in this initially. And then I saw it after the fact and I was like, oh my lanta. So needless to say, you know, this is definitely lower. I mean, this, this is real. This is real. Twitter is no longer in an uptrend. Twitter is now in a downtrend. The downtrend in Twitter is going to continue. It could drop off a planet here even tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I wouldn't put it past this actually gapping down again tomorrow as a continuation gap. If it doesn't, it may back off for a day or so. But, you know, this is a problem here for the Twitter now. It's, it's lower. And what are you going to do? I mean, it's a short. It's a short. It's a defined short. And it's a short now until otherwise noted. Twitter is officially in a downtrend after the day, and I think it's very important to notice this. Uh, you know, and who could have guessed? I mean... But it didn't. And I knew it as soon as I saw it. You know, I was talking about this to somebody today. When you are a trainer and you learn what to do, you develop yourself through your eye. Your eye tells you. Now, I write the gaps. I go through the process. I do what I do every day. I follow my system. I follow my structure. But lots of times I can see something boop, and my eye just sees it. I see it. I just, I see it. I see it before it even does it. And that's kind of how I saw this today. You know, and and there's many, many days that happens. And I think if you train your eye to read stocks correctly, you can do the same thing. Of course, you have to know what to look for. And if you know what to look for, you're, you're never going to train your eye. In fact, many people are training their eye to do things that are not right. But, you know, once you learn how to trade and know what's right, your eye gets trained and then becomes instinctual. And you go through the process and it confirms it. And then you train your eye and you get better and better and better and better and better at it. And that's how I can call some of these things ahead of time before they even do it. And, you know, Twitter is kaputsi now in this. It's in a downtrend, and I don't see any recovery for this anytime soon. This downtrend in Twitter could last as long as it wants to last. We'll have to see. Could it flip? Yes. Have we seen that happen sometimes in stocks? Yes. Is it likely to happen on this? 50-50, but probably not because this really shouldn't have happened. Okay? And particularly, I'm just going to point this one thing out and let everybody go. Because the gap down here failed. I wasn't crazy about this, and it was not a short this day. But the gap down here failed. Gap down failed on Twitter here. So if it wanted to support itself and it wanted to hold, if it didn't want to create a problem for itself, it could have done this then on the gap down failure and rally. And forget the market for a minute. That's not the reason this gap worked today. It helped it to go to some crazy target I didn't even have written down. Uh, but... It would have worked anyways. This would have worked anyways no matter what the market did today. And that's the great thing about gaps. That's a wonderful, beautiful thing about gaps. So this is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. Have a great evening, everyone. Have a fabulous night. I'll see you all tomorrow. The Golden Gap class is this weekend, May 10th and 11th. If you're interested in signing up, email me at Melissa at the StockSwish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.